In 2017, over 16,500 Australian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, with 3,500 of these cases being fatal. As the third leading cause of cancer-related mortality in men, finding innovative treatment options may help prevent the progression of solid malignancies towards an ultimately lethal metastatic disease. Human prostate cancer is a complex heterogeneous disease, but as with all cancers, progression from normal cells to a neoplastic state is a multi-stage process, requiring acquisition of several hallmark capabilities, known as the hallmarks of cancer. Prostatic adenocarcinoma predominantly arises from epithelial cells in the peripheral zone, initiated by the formation of pre-neoplastic lesions, collectively known as prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia. Aggressive forms of the cancer will eventually invade the seminal vesicles, followed by a metastasis to the bone and distant organs. In comparison to patients with localized prostate cancer, whose five-year survival rate approaches 100%, those in which distant metastases have occurred have a five-year survival of only 31%. One hallmark of cancer which presents as a potential therapeutic target is angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the formation of new blood vessels, which promotes the growth and survival of cells within a tumor by overcoming a lack of nutrient and energy supply. This process is a key feature to the development of metastatic disease, as it involves basement membrane degradation, allowing invasive tumor cells to metastasize and enter the bloodstream. As metastasis is what causes death in prostate cancer, by targeting the process of angiogenesis and hence minimizing disease progression, we hope to reduce the rate of fatality within these patients. For prostate cancer to acquire an angiogenic phenotype, the delicate balance between pro- and anti-angiogenic factors must be disrupted. Vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, is a potent stimulator of angiogenesis. Normal prostate tissue expresses little or no VEGF, but under conditions of hypoxia, it is overexpressed in prostate cancer cells. Binding of VEGF A subtype to its tyrosine kinase receptor, VEGF R2, on endothelial cells is thought to play a major role in inducing the angiogenesis cascade. Certain endothelial cells will acquire a tip cell phenotype and begin to sprout towards gradients of proangiogenic growth factor signals to form new blood vessels in the tumor microenvironment. Another mechanism that the pathway is sensitive to is the alternative splicing. Alternative splicing of VEGF-A pre-mRNA can result in several isoforms whose proportions dictate the balance of angiogenesis. Exon A splicing proximally leads to the increase of the proangiogenic isoform of VEGF A, while splicing distally produces the anti-angiogenic form. Regulation of the location of splicing is dependent upon the enzyme serine arginine protease kinase 1, SRPK1. SRPK1 phosphorylates serine arginine rich splicing factor 1, SRSF1. Upon phosphorylation, SRSF1 binds to the VEGF mRNA and thus ensures the proangiogenic isoform VEGF A165A is formed. Prostate cancer, SRSF1 and SRPK1 have both been found to be significantly upregulated. This increases stimulation of vessel growth, increases vascular permeability and results in vasodilation. In addition to this, there is significant downregulation of the antiangiogenic isoform of VEGF A. By tipping the balance in favour of the pro-angiogenic isoform, this promotes the necessary environment for tumours and their stroma to continue growing and pervading. Therefore, targeting angiogenesis is a promising area for new novel therapies since there are currently no effective strategies against metastatic prostate cancer. Our proposed therapy is based on a previously developed SRPK1 inhibitor named Sphinx 31. It has shown promising results in preventing SRPK1 phosphorylation in recent animal models of age macular degeneration and prostate cancer cell lines. A 2013 study on SRPK1 inhibitors in rodent models of age macular degeneration found that Sphinx was more potent than similar SRPK1 inhibitors. This graph shows that Sphinx was able to induce lower SRPK1 activity at the same concentrations as other inhibitors. These findings were supported by a 2015 study on a mouse model of prostate cancer using human PC3 cells. Treatment with Sphinx resulted in a significant downregulation of the proangiogenic isoform and significant inhibition of tumor growth compared with controls. Since this drug is an ATP competitive inhibitor, it prevents ATP binding to SRPK1, thus inhibiting its kinase phosphorylation of SRSF1. This then prevents proximal splicing of VEGF A and reduces production of the proangiogenic isoform. By decreasing angiogenesis, tumor size and progression is reduced. Since this drug is still in its developmental phase, funding is needed to overcome certain limitations. Although it has been shown to prevent tumor growth, it may not induce tumor regression. Prostate cancers that do not express upregulated SRPK1 signaling will not benefit from this treatment. 
Also, further studies will need to be conducted to establish better modes of delivery. With your funding, we believe this idea has the potential to pose enormous therapeutic benefits to patients suffering prostate cancer.